Welcome to my Plants of 2020 video. In this video, as I just said, I will show you what I'm expecting to do this year and what my plants are. I'm not sure if I can follow them. Actually, I make very much plants every year and I kind of get some other inspiration or find a new fabric or take part in a challenge and so the plants do mix up quite often. But I do start the year out with planning everything out and I will show you what I got on my list for this year and I always do it like this that I have four main projects four or five and then some bonus projects which I do if I have time over which does not happen very often but maybe this year will be different so I start the year out with three projects that I started in fall so first up is that I finished them and this is first the opera gown as I call it which is a 1906 evening gown and you probably just know about it if you follow me on Instagram but I will do some videos showing the process of making it precisely very precisely I made the Edwardian petticoat video and the bustle pad video and the embroidery video which you might know if you follow me here that are the foundation garments for it. I already have a corset and a chemise and now it's just a matter of finishing the overgown which will take at least a few months since I do a lot of beading and embroidery on it and I'm very slow at it because I'm losing a bit of motivation doing this dress but I will, it will get done eventually. The other dress I'm currently working on is an Austrian Tiendel dress and I started this over a year ago. When I was in school we had a special course on this traditional Austrian folk wear and I did start with a dandel and made the bodice and then got distracted by all the things we had to do in school so I didn't really have time to finish it and I didn't want to finish in summer as well because the bodice is made out of a uh, felt wool thing and I didn't want to finish it in summer because I thought about making nice pictures in the snow or something but the dress should be done quite soon I hope maybe in February or even the end of January. I don't have too much to do, I just need to attach the skirt to the bottom and make an apron. And for the apron I have fabric, which is this uh, Shakar like white fabric. We can see it quite well. And I will make an apron out of that to go over the dress. And then it will be done. No, I need to do, I need to make some trimmings around the neckline as well, but then it will be done. And the next dress I'm working on and the next bigger, big project is a um, 1780s formal gown, more or less formal gown. Um, and I did make a chemise, I made a pocket and I'm currently making the stays. Or I want to do videos about everything. I filmed the process of making everything, it's just a matter of editing, which takes really a long time, <laughs> as I noticed. Um, but over on Instagram, I will put my um, Instagram name right here, or anywhere else on the screen. I have all the pictures of the finished stuff. And now, um, as I said, I'm working on the stays, then I will make a bump pad and then I can move on to the dress. And the dress is a sewn front gown and I will do some scalloped edges as details and some details with this fabric first which is a light blue baby blue chiffon. This will go on the skirt, on the petticoat and then an overdress with 
this fabric right here. This will be the overdress. It's, I think it's 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 rayon. I think it is how you call it in English. And it has like this crap texture. But I really love the print because the print really reminds me of something from the 18th century. And you might think that those two don't really go together, but I think they do. I think the light blue makes the purple fabric quite fresh. So this will be for the details on the skirt and this will be the overdress and I will combine this with a um, white thin cotton fabric. So moving on to the things I didn't have in process but I will make in the future. And first up I recently bought a fabric which is need to unfold it because I already washed it. This is a dark green turquoise uh, baby cord fabric and I saw a picture of, um, of a jumper from the 1960s on a vintage fashion website and I want to do this jumper, jumper thing from the 60s with this fabric and some very cool buttons I got from my grandpa. So this will happen in winter because this is quite a thick fabric and I think it's more appropriate for winter so I will get started on this pretty soon I think. But I'm not sure if I will film a video because I have very very much material of... I filmed very much material already from projects I worked on and garments I worked on so I don't know if I will film this or if it will get too much but yeah I will live I will obviously I will link all the pictures from references and ideas I have down below but I can't do them I can't just put them into the video because of copyright problems you know so moving on to the next big thing and I usually like when I do all the undergarments for a certain period I like to work on this period a little bit more and do like at least two costumes uh, mo mostly just two costumes from the same decade and as I'm making the 1780s undergarments I want to do a little cosplay of my favorite musical and this is the main fabric for it and if you know the musical you might guess 1780s and this fabric that I'm doing an Eliza Hamilton cosplay and this has been on my list since last autumn not this but the 2018 one you know uh, so this is the fabric I have for it and it's not much I have to say I just bought, bought four meters I think or five I don't know which will be a little bit of a problem because I didn't think that you need so much of this fabric for this decade but I will do my best and hope it will be enough because I'm pretty sure that this isn't uh, this was really the last bolt of it and there are just those four or five meters on it so that's all I can get of it but I hope really hope it will work and it will still look good it's a polyester fabric I think and it is backed with um, some sort of chiffon so it makes it very it gives it a really good body and I think it shines beautifully so this will be the main dress I also picked up some lace for that to go around the sleeves and around the neckline as you see in the musical this is also very beautiful lace and very flowy which I really wanted and then obviously some lining, which is just a simple white cotton with some stripes on it. And what I also bought for this costume are some uh, vintage flowers, which I used for millinery. But I think they did just fit it beautiful to the fabric. So even though it's not in a musical and she has a very simple hairstyle, I kind of want to put that into the hair and make a little hair hair piece like a hair clip that I can put on the back of my head just to give it a little bit more of a girly vibe I don't know I just thought they looked very cute to the fabric and I will definitely use them for that also I have some 
uh, metal buttons, which I will be covering for the buttons she has on her dress. Next up is um, my project I plan for fall or something. The Liza cosplay is planned in summer and this is the, the first process, work in process uh, stuff is just for spring. So I like to work in seasons so I get really nice uh, pictures in a nice environment. And yeah, next up is my fall project which I bought the fabrics for in fall 2018, just like the Eliza stuff. And I wanted to do a medieval plio. I hope I pronounced it right. Plio, pliao. I don't know. But it's the very early medieval garment, and which which has this long sleeves and everything. It's from around 1100 or something. I made a sketch. I will put it right here, I think. And yeah, that's what I'm going to make and I will make it out of this purple linen I found which is a very very soft beautiful linen and I know this color isn't historically accurate well purple was achievable but not in this dark shade it would have been in a much lighter shade or something and probably in wool and not in linen but wool is very expensive as you know and the linen is quite cheap at my fabric place and also historically accurate so I did go for the linen so that's why it's linen and not wool and this dark color because I just wanted to do something purple I don't know I'm this year I'm really into purple and it just seems so lovely so I had to get it although it's not historically accurate but I will for this costume I'm going a little bit off with historical accuracy because medieval times are very restricting <laughs> And I just wanted to have a little bit of freedom and do like my own interpretation. And this is done with medieval stuff quite often, but the cuts will be accurate, but the fabrics and my materials and my colors not quite. So for that dress, I will make an underdress, and I have this uh, new trousse uh, cotton. Which would be accurate if it would be linen, but it's cotton. And I will make an underdress with some shell buttons on the sleeves or something. So I hope this peeked through because they're really pretty. Yeah, buttons would be invented a little bit later than this costume is from. So, oh well. I bought a silk, a dark purple silk, which goes quite well with the other purple tone. And I will do sort of a wimple or something or wimble and a uh, circlet which is this chain you wear around your head to secure the wimple and for that I bought this chain I don't know this is loud this little chain and I want to go it like around my head I also bought some beads for that also in this brass tone as this chain is and I will incorporate this at that as well and have some uh, brown cotton tape which will serve as sort of a belt or something and I also have some is it cotton or is it wool or what is it that's wool that's a very thick wool thread and I have some linen thread with ma which matches the uh, linen fabric in purple and I will do some couching around the neckline. So we'll just go a little bit crazy with the decor. I don't know if you're interested. I will ask a few questions in this video. First, are you interested in a video about how to um, detect different fibers with a burning test? I could make a short video about that if you're interested in it. Otherwise, no. <laughs> but tell me in the comments what you think and if you have any wishes for future videos of mine. What it want to do on the turn of the year and where I don't have a sketch from now is an Elsa cosplay and not because I first of all I love Frozen 2 I really loved the movie and I noticed that many people hated it but I really loved it and obviously the, the last gown you see in the movie the spirit gown as many people call it is um, 
gotten quite popular and many people want to cosplay it and cosplay other things from the movies. So I thought I might twist it up and do a historical accurate version. And put a sketch right here. I, al I already sketched it out and I want to do an 1840s version of it, which has some sort of fantasy elements in it just like it is in the film. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I haven't bought anything for that. I just, the, the idea popped up in my head like a week ago. So I want to do is next year so I can maybe get it done next January so there's no maybe. And yeah, I need all the materials for that. I need a wig and I need um, the whole cottons and boning for crinoline and everything so I haven't planned on going into a new different entire different decade this year so I hope I can do it it's also a matter of money obviously because the things are quite expensive uh, but I really hope I can do it and if you'd like to see that and many other projects I would do if I have more time and more money consider looking up my Kofi account you can support me there with three euros and it would really help with funding a few different projects and um, being able to make them and really show them to you in detail but let's get back to the things I already have uh, for the two bonus projects I will do if I have time and this is first the Regency area area? era. The Regency era. And I bought this fabric. I bought three meters of it and it's a cream colored base with some pink roses on it and some bows. And I just adored the print of the fabric. It's just so nicely designed and I really needed to get it. So I was thinking about doing sort of a day gown or an evening, a very simple evening gown and then with some pink silk that matches the roses I will do a spencer jacket. I have a pink silk on my local fabric store but my first idea was just to make a few details with this pink silk but now I want to do a whole spencer so I need to save a little bit of money to afford this silk but it ma it's a Dubioni silk, but it matches it really, really well, and I think it will turn out beautifully. And also, what I bought last fall, I think, American Duchess product placement right here. There's some Regency slippers, and those are the dashwoods, and they're really beautiful, and I think they go quite well together with the fabric. And I would make sort of a. a they were a costume in pink and beige and brown. So that they fit as well. So that's my... But I would still need to make all the undergarments for that, which means I would need a ton of cotton and boning and cording and all the good stuff. So this would be quite time... Con in, I, I would need to have quite a lot of time to actually do this this year. Also the Spencer I thought about. I will link some pictures below. It's quite complicated so it has a few uh, petal designs and everything. So if I have really much time I can do this. Otherwise it will have to wait till next summer or spring. But I hope I could do it. <laughs> I really hope. And what I also thought about this dress is that I might do a little layering in the dress, which is not typical for this period. But I can hide a zipper with in there and wear it just like this because I would really love to have this fabric in my closet so that I can transform the dress maybe into a history bounding look that I can wear on a daily basis and something that's uh, actual costume. So I think about this but I'm not quite sure if I will because I could wear it long as well in, in casual where it's not that costumey I think especially if it's key, if, if it's kept quite simple. And the last bonus project um, I will do if I have time in fall 
and I have bought the fabrics for that. Um, terrible. At the same time, bought the fabrics for Eliza and the Blue, and um, some in 2018. And this is for an Eponine cosplay of the movie La Miserable. It's one of my favorite musical movies. There aren't much, but I really enjoyed it. Although Eponine, which is one of my favorite char favorite characters, is one of the only ones who is pretty much historically inaccurate. But not quite, you can see where they get the idea, but just that she has no sleeves is pretty inaccurate. Though I still really loved her costume, so I will make it. <laughs> and if you're not talking, if you don't know, a picture of the costume will be down below, as well as a picture of the Liza cosplay, I haven't mentioned that. Um, but she wears this brown skirt, where I have this fabric for, which is a brown cotton with a little bit of texture. And the skirt itself reminds me a little bit of earlier skirts. I think the time where she is young is supposed to be set in the 1820s or 1830s, but I'm not quite sure now. But the fashion definitely speaks for it. So she has a very rough life and lives on the streets and doesn't have too much money. So. It would make sense that her garments are from earlier periods. So, as I said, the costume itself isn't completely inaccurate, but there are some things, just the sleeve thing actually, that would really change. She also wears a belt, which is more of an 1830s thing, uh, with a very big buckle, and I already got this buckle, and I already got the leather as well for that, but the leather is completely put away. I didn't want to get it out, honestly. I get it I get it out one time, the one time I need it. Then I will make the top out of this uh, khaki wool. And as I said, the sleeves bother me a little bit, so I might do some Regency inspired sleeves or something, like a little bit, that she's not completely uncovered here, so I can get away with a little bit more historical accuracy or I keep it completely screen accurate. I don't know. Then I got this beige cotton because in the stage production she has this little hat which I really adored and it doesn't have that in the movie. I might make that too because I have the fabric for it and put a little cockade on there. This typical French Revolution cockade. I already have a button for that and just need to buy some ribbon. And yeah, the cockade got really inspired by Bernadette Banner's video, I will link it down below, where she made a suffragette cockade. So might do a French Revolution one and put it on the head and just wear it with and without the head. And she also wears in the movie sort of a fichu and I got a khaki silk for that, a very thin, sheer, almost sheer uh, silk. Because the fichu itself is quite accurate as well, or is it sort of a pelerine from later decades, I don't know. But it makes the uh, whole garment a little bit more covered up, which is perfect for historical accuracy. And for that I would also wear the Regency slippers, I think, or I will look out for some flat boots or something. So that's that. And I think we're through. That's it my friends. That's already the plans for 2020. I really hope I didn't forget to show you anything, but I don't think so. Um, I hope you're excited as I am and I hope I can really do the things I want to do this year and not get distracted with something else. And yeah, stay tuned. Subscribe to my channel for to see all of the videos I make about the things I will make. And subscribe to Instagram because I'm a little bit early with showing the things I already did. Like, I'm actually a lot earlier there. And leave a comment with anything you want to say to me. And any ideas you might have as well. And yeah, sure, let me know what your plans for 2020 are. And that's about it. And thanks to everybody who subscribed recently to my channel. The numbers are growing insanely <laughs> since the last videos 
and I'm really thankful for that and I'm really glad that you're all interested in what I'm doing. So thank you and goodbye.